We're live. Good morning, painters. Welcome. Happy Friday. Glad you're with me. And uh, today we're going to be talking about how to paint barns for beginners. Yeah, so I did this uh, over here. Yeah, this way. I did this uh, planter painting on Wednesday, just a couple days ago. It's still wet. So I'm just kind of fresh in my mind about how I did it. And so I just want to talk about what went right with it, what went wrong, what we could change, and just how I did maybe a few strokes here and there. And maybe it can help you. If you get my newsletter, uh, you know, I mentioned in there that uh, barns, people like like barn paintings. They really do. I love barn paintings. Uh, I'm sure you like to paint barns or structures like that. And people like to buy them. So uh, that's what I'm interested in. I don't know about you. So let's learn how to paint them better. Um, hey, this is the live show. It is, uh, hey, Fran, glad you were with us. And Ron, awesome. Ron from California. Ron is playing our painting. I know that. He's traveling around. It's so cool. I think he's like, I think Ron is like mobile RV painting kind of thing. So cool. I'm jealous. So thanks for saying hello. Hey, let me know if the sound is okay. I've got two camera angles. I've got two microphones. I'm way in over my head, guys. I can paint, but I can't I can't do this stuff. So I hope you can hear me. And uh, just let me know if there's a problem. I guess we'll leave it at that. If there's a problem, let me know. If not, I'll assume we're good. But uh, anyway, the live show here, we're the first Friday of every month, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Uh, I'm a planner painter. And so are many of you, and even if you're not, you're welcome here to join us because we're really just talking about techniques and tactics and, and stuff like that. But uh, we're, we're trying to help painters who are on the fence about starting plein air get off the fence and do it because it's the most amazing activity in the world. You get to combine your love of the outdoors with your creativity. What can be better? It is unbelievable. So we're trying to help you with that, and it helps me too. So uh, uh, what else? Um, so if you're watching our replay, Welcome. Uh, skip around the channel. There's other videos I'm sure you're interested in. And uh, if we're just meeting, my name's Terry. This is Money Play Air Channel. And again, this channel is all about demos and tutorials and tips and techniques to help you in your plein air journey. And that's what I'm passionate about now is helping people. So uh, anyway, um, if you're in the chat, say a quick hello. And uh, we'll get going here in a second. But I've got a quote of the day to get us fired up. Where is it? I've got it around here somewhere. Okay, the purpose of art is washing the dust of daily life off our souls. Pablo Picasso. The purpose of art is washing the dust of daily life off our souls. That's awesome. There's a lot of art quotes from Pablo Picasso. He, he had a lot to say, I guess. You know, but many of them are pretty, pretty thought-provoking. Um, I wouldn't say it's the purpose, but it is a major purpose that I'm passionate about, too, that life is stressful, life is too short, to just be running and striving and, and doing things you don't want to do. And so, hey, you have talent, you have a gift, and uh, so use it. Make time for yourself. And I encourage you. And that's why we're here, to, uh, to kind of refresh our souls and dust, uh, take the dust off. So we'll get started here in a second. I'm going to change the camera. I'm going to get out of here. And we're going to get to painting. But uh, this live stream is brought to you by the Learning Planner newsletter. I mentioned it earlier. If, you haven't, uh, if you're not on our newsletter list, um, we just, I just once a month, I just send out tips, techniques, new stuff going on with plein air, painting to help you be a better painter. Just click the, there's two links in the description for two free videos. They're not listed on YouTube. And uh, even if you don't want to watch those videos, I encourage you to watch them. But if you, if you don't want to watch them, just click those links to the videos, and it'll have you put in your email, and uh, that will get on my list, and we'll stay in touch. And I'm going to try to help you as much as I can with Stuff that I don't really talk about on YouTube all the time, but just uh, if, you're, if you like to read stuff. All right, let's uh, let's get started. So why are we here? We're in the studio. I mean, it's summer and and uh, and uh, fall and spring. I'm out on the patio. I'm a planner painter. I'm from Colorado, so I'm not a studio painter. But there is value in training in the studio in a stable environment where the lighting doesn't change and the wind doesn't, you know, uh, tip your painting over and stuff like that. So we can focus on techniques. And that's why we're here, and that's what we're doing. So uh, right here, I've got an old canvas. We're just going to get up on that and uh, just, just kind of go over a few things about this barn painting. And please, while I'm painting, if you have questions, there's Barbara. Hey, watching from Newport Beach, California. Oh, I'm so jealous. What a beautiful place. Amazing. Welcome, Barbara. And in the chat, just say hello, and I just say, hey, how can I help you? You know, like, what videos do you want me to do on YouTube? Um, how can I help you today? What do you want to learn about barns? What are you struggling with? And I'm trying to get to it. Okay, so I'm going to paint, but I'm also going to check the chat a little bit. And um, here we go. So we're going to talk about composition. We're going to talk about values. We're going to talk about color and, uh, and barns and strokes. And so we've got about 25 minutes. We've got to get rolling. So I'm going to change the camera here. 
And I put my coffee in, let's get a paint, okay? So the camera's gonna shake here in a minute, but don't get upset with me. I'm just gonna move it closer so you can see. Throw my coffee down. Okay, so I'm gonna just shift this closer right in here so you can see. And let's go this way. There we go. That's probably good enough. Move my stool out of the way. So I'm out of the picture. You can just hear my voice now, hopefully. But if there's a problem with the voice, with the audio or anything, just let me know and I'll we'll see what I can do. Fran from San Diego. No barns around. <laughs> it's okay, Fran. Man, if I was in San Diego, I'd be painting sunsets and beaches all the time. That's what I'd be painting. But you know, if you like cityscapes, Fran, and if you like other kinds of structures and buildings. I think it's good to paint those things once in a while. I mean, hey, just look at my channel, right? What do I like to paint? Mountains, 99.9% .9 of the time. But, you know, my wife's always telling me, she's like, paint something else, man. And, uh, you know, it's good to paint geometric structures like this because it, it teaches us, you know, everything is a shape. That's why I paint apples. That's why I, I paint stuff, still life. And, and uh, for these live shows, it's just all geometric shapes. And so it doesn't matter if you're painting the ocean or a palm tree, or a, a person walking on the beach, or whatever. It's all its all a shape, a value, a color, a temperature, right? Okay, let's get rock and roll. So yeah, with this barn painting, um, you can see it on the other screen. I wonder what happens if I, if I just point like, yeah, okay, I can point, you can see. <laughs> okay, so here's your first decision, right, with a painting like this. And you saw, if you get my newsletter, you saw the picture of the actual scene. It's different from what I painted, right? And uh, so your first choice has to do with composition, you know? Like, what are your pieces in the painting? Uh, here's a piece, a big piece. This whole mountain range is one piece. Here's a piece right here that's very interesting. This is all in shadow with a light coming from here down on the scene. And so you, you have to be careful of what's in the light, right? Like, this is in the light, the roof's in the light, light on the mountains, so pieces. And then, you know, the place of things, okay? So here's something interesting that I want to kind of bring up is um composition right there, there there's lots of photography and artistic rules of composition um and i i probably violate all of them just just, just let you know if I'm, I'm not into those <laughs> okay i'm talking about rule of thirds you know rule of thirds and don't put your arm in the middle of the painting and leading lines and uh you know tipping point you know, all, all those you know all things i don't i don't really give a rat's grip about that stuff i mean i kind of do but i don't really right so I'm standing on the side of the road in the ditch. The fence is like three feet from me. I got no roads I can go. This is all private property. And so, hey, I want to paint this. So, so am I just going to turn away and say, no, I'm sorry. I really, the only view I have is straight on. So, therefore, I'm going to go home and I'm going to paint it. No, I'm going to paint this. I'm going to paint it the way I see it. I love it. And I don't really give a rat's rip if the barn's in the middle. Here's another violation of composition rules. Maybe you shouldn't have these two peaks, this peak and this peak of the barn underneath each other like that. You know what? I don't care. I like the scene. I love it. It's it's amazing. I like the shadow. I love paint barns. And so um, that's your first decision, though. You have to decide for yourself, you know, um, if that's something that you, uh, if you're okay with or not, and where you're going to, you know, the pieces, the placement, the proportion of things. Are you going to, you know, are you going to zoom in? Like I zoomed in on that barn, right? It was further away. There was also another barn down here and another structure over here, and I omitted those. So if you know anything about my, my, my composition choices, if you kind of watch my stuff, I like to make an intimate, simple painting, right? You, you look out as a beginner, you look out and you see all this stuff and it's confusing. And so I just really wanted this to be the focus of my painting. And I showed some, the fourth P that I talked about is perspective. I showed a little bit of perspective with the fence tailing off into the distance. And it didn't take me much room on my painting to show that, right? Like I wasn't, and this isn't fabulous, but but I think I effectively showed a little bit of perspective with the fence going down, and um, and it didn't take me a whole lot of, of room. But anyway, my, my point is with the with the perspective and with the proportion is how big do you want to make that barn? Like I could have, it probably was, was smaller, right? It was further from me, but I like to kind of zoom in and make things a little more intimate like that. So you have a choice of what you can do. Um, Okay, I like to draw the barn in first. And uh, I'm gonna check the chat in case I'm missing some something here. There is Miley. Hey, barns here. But I, but I can paint the outhouse, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hey, there's some beautiful outhouses. Don't don't judge. I mean, 
they're, they're rustic looking, uh, um, you know, from the outside, I'm saying, not the inside, but. <laughs> well, welcome, and uh, thanks for mentioning that. And um, so you can abstract the barn in, or you can draw it in. I'm a, I'm a big guy into drawing, if you follow my stuff. So I'm going to draw this barn in, but here is what you could do, okay? You could, uh, you could, Tim's I'm just going to put in some turpenoid, odorless turpenoid, and I'm going to mix up. You can't see my palette, though, huh? That's the only negative. Here, let me turn the camera down just for a quick second onto my palette. Okay, uh, I'm going to mix up some, I'm going to mix up a tree color, okay, just real quick with some cad yellow medium. I don't really love this palette knife. I'm going to change palette knives. Um, one second. The last live show we did was on palette knives. If you, if you missed that one, check that one out. Some ultramarine blue, okay? I'm just going to go into a simple, so this is how I mixed that, that tree piece right here. It was all in shadow. And in my last YouTube video, I, I did it on trees and I talked about greens. So I'm not gonna stick with that, right? You gotta, you gotta take the vibrancy out of that. So I'm gonna put some cad red in there, maybe a little bit of cerulean blue to really cool it, you know, a nice cool green. But, uh, you know, I might be too dark on my, I might be too dark on my uh, value there, but that's okay. So you can just abstract this stuff in to begin with. And here's an important point for you is it's not just about the barn that I'm concerned about. Really, the reason I'm talking about abstracting something in first is because a color is what it is and it only makes sense because of what's around it, you know, and, uh, the surrounding color. So again, I'm big into, um, I'm big into comparing huge into comparing right when you're playing or painting and you're out there you have to compare like colors to like colors so i'm going to compare back over the painting here, i'm going to compare this green to the greens in the field over here you know what i mean and so uh let's just kind of all right here we go so let's look i'm gonna put some snow in next okay and this isn't normally how I start a painting. I don't know, I, I just really kind of prove a point here that how important the surrounding colors to a barn are. Because you want to describe like what, what time of day are you painting that barn, you know? So ultramarine blue, sorry, I gotta go back up to the, I'm gonna go back up to my painting, <laughs> sorry. There we go. All right, I'll stop messing around. Okay, but I'm just going ultramarine blue, titanium white, a little bit of permanent rose, just to make a nice kind of neutral, violet looking snow color that's really all i'm trying to do here and once i get the snow in it's really going to help me you know with the barn is what i'm tr trying to say here so i'm just going to really just kind of abstractly get that in and i'm going to get to the barn here i just i just want to spend two minutes doing this you know just to show you some things about how surrounding pieces and colors can really make your barn look better and describe to the viewer what time of day that you're painting that barn right because for me it's all about the memory the mood the impression and when people look at your paintings you know they want to know you know the time of day the month the year or whatever where you uh where you painted okay let's go to the barn so let's talk about perspective okay so Again, I'm not making the rules, but you got this is the one thing that you got to kind of know or else your barn's going to look funky. And this right here is probably one of the most challenging um, perspective barns that I've, I've really ever painted because I'm standing above that barn looking down. So the horizon line, okay, follow me here. We've got to use our brains here for a minute. The horizon line is, let me grab this ruler, probably somewhere, I'm looking down, but it's it's probably somewhere like, like right about there, like, like there, you know what I mean? Like the horizon line isn't there, and it's not down here. It's, it's somewhere right about there. So therefore, the one thing we got to talk about is your orthogonal lines or your diagonal lines on a building or a barn, and they got to go. They all got to go toward that line. So this top of the roof starts here, and it goes toward the, uh, the vanishing point on the horizon line. This line changes slightly, and this line opens up and goes up to it. So you see. Kind of like a little fan, fan brush. You can see how these lines on the barn do that. Okay, I don't want to get too far ahead or too advanced, and maybe some of you know this already, but this is an example of two-point perspective. 
So one point perspective, let's go back to the canvas here, is when you're looking down a street like this, right? You're looking at a road or, or railroad tracks and you have buildings up here. You just, there's one horizon, one point, one vanishing point on the horizon line right here. But since I'm looking to the side of this barn, I have two point perspective. And therefore, I have to consider the other side of the barn that also goes to the to another vanishing point, but on that same horizon line. Okay. You only have one horizon line. You can't have like multiple horizon lines. All right. But you can have multiple vanishing points of where buildings go to on that horizon line. Does that make sense? So that's the first consideration that you got to you got to talk about is okay. Am I describing to the viewer like, you know, where you know, where am I in relation to the horizon line? You know what I mean? Like, am I above the barn, below the barn? You see, if I was below the barn, it would look like this. Barn, barn, and then come down to the horizon line like that, right? So you just have to do that correctly, okay? You just have to be able to do that and know that. And if you mess that up, People are going to see it in your pain, so they're going to know you're you're a rookie and you're a beginner. <laughs> and even though you are a beginner, we don't want to let people we don't want to let people know that. You know, <laughs> we want them to buy your paintings. Is what I'm trying to say. So that's just a quick like sketch. Like this is kind of really how I did it in the field. Just just keep my proportions right, my my placement right, and everything. And then the snowbank would come over and help me, you know, describe the barn like that. But I got to get smaller on this side of the barn, you know, with my roof and everything like that. So it's it's kind of a tricky roof. It's kind of a tricky angle. But look, these go, these lines have to go to the horizon line, the bottom of the barn, the middle of the barn, and then this is tricky. This is a tricky because it's just kind of slightly coming up, like just up, tilted up just a little bit, right? And there's my roof, you know, kind of like that. So you see what I'm getting at? And then. You know, what I did was I just filled that shadow in, you know, just real quick, because it's a light and shadow painting. So everything I'm painting is in light and shadow. And I'm going to switch to a bigger brush, and I'm going to put the barn strokes on now. But again, if you're joining us, welcome, we're live. And we're just talking about uh, planar painting, barns, and just values and composition and, and perspective and everything to do with that. And uh, we're going to have a live Q&A at the end. Um, I'll try to see if you have questions. So France and I, France, as I spend, uh, Part of the year in Washington, plenty of barns up there near my house. Oh, beautiful! I don't, I don't spend. I really want to travel with my family to the, to the West Coast a little bit more, to those places, and, um, you know, I bet you there's some beautiful barns there. And in Colorado, there's some. I just, I wish there was more. But I'm gonna go to like a uh, silver. This is like a number eight or a ten, um, synthetic, um, um. Silver brush, I think this is. Yeah, silver brush bristling. But anyway, um, let's just let's just show you how I did those brush strokes on the barn real quick, and then I'll talk to you about decision number two. But but let's just go to decision number two. Now we're talking about you know shadows, light and shadow and everything. So I first started out with the shadows. So I'm going to show you how I do. When you paint rustic barns or anything like that, you know you 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 don't want to tell yourself you're painting a barn. But uh, so I just took some lizard and crimson. And here, let me go down to palette view. I know I told you I wasn't going to do that, but um, I want to show you my color mixing. Okay, hold on. Uh, there we go. So I took some lizard crimson and then some like cerulean blue and a little bit of yellow ochre, maybe even just a little phthalo blue. Um, you can take some you know, gray from a pile you have, a little titanium white, but not much. Don't put too much titanium white in there. Um, I want it to be a real dark value, right? Because Here's a point too, right? Is you've got to get your values correct. Like let's let's look at this painting. I'm not saying that, that this is a masterpiece by any means, but this is what I was trying to accomplish. Okay, see the fence posts? These are gonna be your darkest darks right here. That's closest to me. And then but the barn, you know, that's how I brought it closer to me. Is I really wanted the barn to be the focus, even though I think this is really beautiful, the mountains. Uh, but this is gonna be almost the same value as the fence post, pretty dark. But I'm gonna have, if you could see this closely, I don't know if you can, but I'm gonna have some striations. Go to my Instagram account, if you're on Instagram, you'll see this painting. I have some striations, and I'm gonna show you how I did that right now in the barn, different, different reflected light and colors and rusticness of the barn. So I'm gonna show you right now how I did that. So let's look over here in the palette. 
You don't want to overmix your colors. That's not that's not how I do it. So um, what I mean by that is just swipe your brush through. I need that to be darker. A little more. Swipe your brush through just a couple times, and then that's it. You know, that's it. Don't overmix it. Uh, because then it makes these natural, beautiful striations of color, you know, in the bar. You, you want a little more red, so that's no problem. Just put a little more red in there like that. And then um, I just do kind of thick, you know, try to make them confident brush strokes. Don't like nitpick it. Just throw the paint on there. And it's really dark. You see, it's a dark value. But that's why I was telling you, we got to look at what's around it, you know, because it will help describe and pop the value of the dark barn. I really wanted this barn to, to be a, a really dark, beautiful, rich color in the landscape. That's really what I was trying to accomplish. Go a little more cerulean blue, maybe, to show some reflected light. And you just kind of do little brush strokes like that. Make sure you get smaller as the barn goes away from you and recedes. But... You may not be able to see that too close, but you can. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to get from my painting. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Back to the painting. Okay, let me show you those strokes again. So I don't over mix. I just add one color in. And then, like that. So if I want to make a little more yellow ochre in there, just put the ochre in my pile. But don't over mix. You see? And just do little slight colors like this. See, and then I can go back into cerulean blue and go over that if I want, but leave some of it showing in different places. So you can adjust what you want. Now I'd like it to be a little more burgundy or red or on the red side of dark. So I just go into alizarin crimson, put it in my pile, but don't over mix, and then go back in and just go over top of those strokes like that, you know? But I'm keeping, I'm, I'm conscious of the value. I'm changing colors, but I'm really, really conscious of the value. So here would be the mistake. Here, here, here would be a mistake because if I had changed that value by putting in a color, a lot of artists that are beginners are like, oh, I want to put in some yellow. I want to put in some orange. And Well, let's just do that. Let's just put in some yellow. Okay, you go and do that. And look, you just ruined, you just totally ruined the value of that piece that was so rich and beautiful. So subtly change your colors, but keep your value the same, right? Easier said than done. So I can just go back and fix that. It's no big deal. It's easy to do. Um, and then we're, we're painting a light, light and shadow painting here. So when you look at the roof, I didn't describe the roof too much because it was just blaring in sunlight. So the tendency for many beginners would be to go like this and do every line, you know, that you see possible on the roof of that barn. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, you know. Like, don't do anything in the landscape that's repetitive like that. Um, you know, the way I did that roof, I'm going to chat real quick if you, okay, there we go. <laughs> Ron's laughing like, hey, hey, Mr. Dumas, can you put the camera back on the painting? <laughs> That's what you're laughing about. Um, what else do you want to see in this barn? Let me just do the roof real quick. But if you want to see something, you're going to paint something else. Probably not going to paint that mountain because we don't have time. But uh, let's go on the roof. So just titanium white. And then, gosh, you can use colors from your other piles a little bit, a little bit of orange, yellow. It's kind of like a grayish, very, very warm color that's getting direct sunlight. But I got to follow, follow my lines that I drew out before. You know, I got to really, really be conscious of that, you know, so that, uh, so that I stay in line with what, with my perspective and and all that. So you really got to be careful of that. So I can turn my brush to the side like this to describe that one and then turn it over to its full right there to kind of show a little smaller and bigger as it gets closer to you. You know, so that's one thing you can do. That's really kind of how I did the color, but it's tricky. It's just a shade of value. And I can even go in and do different brush strokes to show the light shining like that. But, um, but the way I did the, you know, I still want to show the rusticness of the roof. Let me just go like this. I still want to show the rusticness of that roof. But uh, what you can do, so you can use a palette knife, right? I can go like this and just show a couple little strokes. You don't want to overdo it though, you know what I mean? 
We really don't want to overdo it. So just, just show a couple in various spots so that the, the viewer's eye fills in the rest. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of really how I did the roof of that barn. And then back here, this was really, really dark, you know, when I painted it. But, like, it comes like that. And you can dig in light and dark and dark into light to show different, uh, to show the rusticness of that barn. You know, I like don't, don't necessarily do like exactly straight lines, you know, like this, exact straight. I don't, I don't really paint like that. I just kind of free flow it a little bit, let, let dark, you know, go into light, light into dark. And right here, you can kind of show the, the roof a little bit like that. And, you know, the shadow it was really one of the beautiful parts of this that I really loved painting was just titanium white, ultramarine blue, a little bit of lizard crimson, maybe a permanent rose. And, and it's just this nice, dark, rich purple, you know, shadow color in the snow like that, that you can kind of show just some beautiful. And then, you, you know, you've heard me say it before, but just bump up the light next to the shadow, you know, always look for chances to put, um, you know, light snow next to dark snow because um, contrast creates interesting paintings, you know? So um, that's kind of what I did with that. And that's kind of part of the beauty of what I really loved about, about this scene was, you know, the light and the shadow. And so that's just a few strokes to show you how I, how I did things. If you want me to show you something else, let me know. We'll kind of wrap it up here in a few minutes, but uh, let's just review what we talked about just for these tips, you know? And then you have this, you know, the snow hill coming down there like that. But, um, hey, hey, I mean, the other thing you can do with your palette knife, I can paint this bar with my palette knife. So same rules, don't overmix. Get your pile and slowly introduce one color and then another color into that same pile, but keep the value the same. You know what I mean? And so I can take my palette knife like this. And I can, I love making a barn, you know, like that. Like that stroke just picked up, like it's called a, I call it a rainbow effect. I don't know if I came up with that, but it's got like eight different colors. Like in, you know, it's just so, it's such a cool way to make a barn. So that's another way that you can do the barn like that. And then just introduce other colors. Like here's some yellow ochre, maybe a little orange to show the reflected light coming into the barn. See that? See how bright that is? I don't want to keep that like that, but I do want that color in there. But the nice thing is you can just go over it with your knife again, and it just blends in, you know? So you can do stuff like that. So that's really how I showed the reflected light, the differing uh, colors and values, but I kept the big piece, the, the big value piece, all the same without, you know, um, messing up that piece, which is so, which is the focal point, really. It's it really why I painted this. This painting was that barn, you know. So, hey, a little, a little rough, real quick, uh, you know. But let me know if you want to see any other strokes. And then, you know, the way to show depth is uh, I'm just gonna check chat here real quick. Oh, phone battery's low. Well, if it shuts off, you'll know why, right? But uh, I'll try to leave room for a live Q and A here. So I'll stop in a minute. But the way I mix those mountains, um, I think it's important for you guys to know how to show depth and perspective. So I'll show you that real quick, one last thing. So titanium white, ultramarine blue, a little bit of maybe permanent rose in there to make a neutral, like a little violet color. And then I wanna really gray it down. So I put a little bit of orange in there, but the value of it has to really be the coolest and, and like the lightest thing from me. So let me just show you real quick you know, that mountain and how it can, just the color of it, it doesn't matter about the shape, just the color of that mountain, you know? Right in here, just that, it's all big, one big piece, you know, that's all a mountain right there. And so what we have is we have depth, you know, we have we have a dark, we have a mid-tone, and then a light, so it gets lighter and cooler as we go back, you know? Um, but, and then showing the light on the mountain is just, just really fun, you know, it's just really fun to just show um, warm and cool, light and shadow, you know, that's really just how I kind of did that. So, uh, you know, we're talking about bars, not mountains, but hey, you know, so let's just put it down there. I think there's some valuable things if you just review. The first thing you got to think about is your composition. 
You know, your placement of it, the, the pieces, the proportion, how big are you going to make that barn? Do you want to kind of violate the rules like I do and just put it wherever you want? Or I had no other choice. I couldn't, that's all, that's just like the sand. It was right there to see it. And I just couldn't pass up that view. But if you're creative, there's nothing wrong with placing that barn a little bit to the right. I could have easily have done that. You know, and, and maybe I would next time and not be so stubborn about things and being a rebel or whatever you want to call it. But you could do that. You could move that to the right or to the left. You know what I mean? And then you wouldn't have that problem or that concern that some people have of the two the two points like that. And, you know, you can do the roof the same way with a pallet knife, just like that. And I just showed natural lines in one stroke. I just It kind of looks like a, a barn roof. But let me know if you have questions, let me know if you have comments, and we'll kind of work our way here toward winding it down. But uh, again, if you join us, welcome, we're live, and uh, we're playing our painter, trying to get fired up, encouraged, motivated, educated for playing our painting. Um, I'll be back on the camera here in a second. If there's something else you want to see, let me know. If you have a question or a comment, a lot of people re-watch this on YouTube, and they get value from your comments and your insights. So if you have a tip or a disagreement or technique or whatever drop it in there and uh really appreciate that but um i think that the composition is the first thing and then the drawing has got to be you know you just have to be particular about showing your perspective with your lines you know they just have to go to the horizon point and then like i said when you look at an object from the side you're gonna have two point perspective you know these lines are gonna have to go to the horizon line as well on this side of the barn. So you gotta just be cognizant of that. And then after that, you're not really painting the barn. You're just painting, you know, you don't want to sit there and tell yourself like, okay, I gotta get every single line on the roof and I gotta get the pole here. Don't do that, you know? I mean, I know I'm impressionistic and you might not be, but um, just see this as a shape, color, value, and temperature. And it shifts this compared to that. This dark compared to those darks. You know, and uh, so anyway, we'll uh, we'll kind of throw it out there. I'm gonna get back on the camera here real quick, and and then we can kind of look and look at the chat here and see. But if you got anything, any questions, comments, um, I'm trying to think here, uh, I've got links in the description to like all my materials and where I get them. And so if you're interested, check that out. We just did a video on trees. Check that video out if you haven't. Tips on painting trees. And uh, what else? Here, let me get on camera here, and then we'll, and then we'll kind of see if you guys have some questions, comments, concerns. But barn painting is really fun, you know. I think like that painting, it's it. it uh, I'm happy with it, but it there's maybe some things I would have changed. Maybe I would have moved the barn to a different location, compositionally. Maybe not. Um, the roof is very tough in the light. Uh, that was tough to paint. It. And uh, there's a lot going on there, right? A lot of pieces. It's And the light moves really, really quickly, especially in the mountains. But that's the fun of plein air painting. That's kind of why we do this. We chase the life, you know? And uh, it's really fun to do that. And so uh, the light was moving overhead so quickly and the shadows were changing. But I encourage you, you know, get out there, plein air paint. Um, dust off your soul, as Pablo Picasso said. And uh, um if you don't have any other questions, we'll kind of sign off there. But uh, thanks for your time and your support, and uh, wish you guys all the best. But yeah, make time to plan your paint. It's good for your soul, and it's good for other people's souls too. They want to see your paintings. You have something to offer the world, and that's why we paint. And people need to see that. So let me just make sure I didn't miss anything here. Go ahead and paint outhouses if you want, as uh, Miley said, if I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> but uh, all right. We'll leave it at that. And uh, what else? Um, hey, I'll put this other video up here. Okay, so I did, interestingly, I did a video, a long form video on this exact location. It was called, um, it was called How to Paint a Rustic Barn. Yeah, so go and look at that video. I'll put it up here next to you click on it. And uh, there's some more expanded tips on exactly what we talked about here, but like a 30 minute video, you know what I mean? So if that interests you, go and check that out. And uh, Leave me some comments on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you as part of the group. Hey, there is GT Ron. Thank you all, friend, everybody, for joining. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your support. Hope you got a couple good tips. God bless you guys. And hey, I guess I'll see you up in the mountains. All right, you take care.